Hi, my name is Dr. Andrew Vardanian. I'm an assistant clinical professor at UCLA in the Division of Plastic Surgery. And I'm here today to talk to you about liposuction for today's active lifestyle. You can ask questions on Twitter and also uh, submit questions on Facebook, and we'll address those at the end of today's talk. I have no disclosures or commercial interests. So what, um, what exactly is liposuction? Um, today's talk is uh, aimed for general information to provide um, the viewers out there on the following questions. What parts of the body can be uh, treated with liposuction? Who's a good candidate for liposuction? And what can I expect uh, after my procedure? So these are some questions that we hope to answer for you. So what exactly is liposuction? Um, you know, we've all heard about it. We've seen it on TV. Um, essentially, liposuction is a way to treat fat in certain parts of the body that are disproportionate. So a common misconception is that liposuction is used to um, completely, you know, um, suck out all the stomach or take all of my fat away. Um, these are actually not the purposes of liposuction. Um, liposuction is designed for very direct and targeted removal of fat. So these are areas of the body that, you know, no matter how much somebody works out, um, you know, taking good care to eat properly, um, you know, exercising, no matter what they do, there's just certain parts of the body that, you know, with aging or because of genetics, just don't go away. And so really the top tr use of liposuction is to treat these targeted areas. And this is referred to as disproportionate parts of the body. So someone, for example, can be a size um, you know, eight in the waist, but for some reason they're just a size 12 in the back and they don't fit properly in clothes or you know, there's a certain you know, obvious deformity that can be seen in clothing and they've tried everything. Liposuction is a way to address these specific problems. So um, it's, the key word is uh, the disproportionate fat, and it is not weight loss surgery. So that's something I want to emphasize for the viewers out there. Additionally, liposuction is something that's done in a, quote, minimally invasive way. So the way the technique was designed, um, it was designed using cannulas that are placed through really small incisions. So ultimately, the patient has a really small scar, so there aren't big incisions that are made with liposuction. So these are kind of the big things of what liposuction is. Um, another really common question is what parts of the body can be treated with liposuction? Well, um, pretty much from the face to the lower extremities, liposuction can be used in many parts of the body. The neck and chin areas can be liposuctioned. Um, the abdomen, lower back um, can be treated. One of the, um, you know, the best places to treat is actually the lower back, the flanks, the love handles, these are areas that do great with liposuction. And we'll talk about why in just a second. And also the lower abdomen, you know, people always want their lower abdomen, you know, treated with liposuction. That may actually not be, you know, the best place to use liposuction. And one of the major reasons for that is the skin, and I'll talk about that briefly. Um, the back, that's a really common place to treat. So these, this can be the upper back, um, women that have a brassiere, and it just creates these sort of accentuations of the fat either um, in, the, in the posterior back or here in the axillary area. These are areas that liposuction can be really um, great, greatly utilized for. Um, it can be used for the male chest. Uh, there's a medical condition called gynecomastia and liposuction is, a, is, a, is one of the treatment options for gynecomastia. Additionally for the female breast, liposuction can be used and, you know, it can be used for a breast reduction. I'm putting this in quotes. Essentially, um, you know, this can be used for a specific type of breast reduction in which um, the patient does not have um, drooping or ptosis of the breast and has excellent skin quality and just wants to essentially remove some of the extra fat from the breast. But in terms of the lateral sidewall, this is a great technique to use for that purpose. The arms can be uh, treated with liposuction, the legs, both the inner thigh, the outer thigh. Um, so pretty much many, many parts of the body can be treated with liposuction. Um, a really uh, important question is who is a good candidate for liposuction? Surgery is all about who the patient is and what the problem is and what is the, you know, the best treatment for that patient. So who makes a good candidate for liposuction? Number one, it's the patient that realizes that this is not a weight loss surgery 
And this is for specific treatment of areas that the fat is just disproportionate, it just doesn't match the other parts of their body. This can be one area alone, or it can be two or three areas. And the treatment of this, of course, can be designed you know, specifically for the areas that are um, tar being targeted. A second important um, issue is the skin quality. You want good skin quality. Liposuction can really affect the soft tissue contour, the way just the rippling looks, the way the body looks, the way cellulite or stretch marks look. And you don't want to make you know, a situation worse. And liposuction used incorrectly can certainly create lifelong problems for patients. And so the skin quality is very, very important. And this is one of the reasons why the love handles, the flank area, the lower posterior back, these are really great areas to treat with liposuction, specifically because the skin does quite well in these areas. And there are other more problematic areas that can be used in certain patients. However, in other patients, um, it would leave them in with deformities and other problems. So what kind of anesthesia do I need for liposuction? Well, we've, um, We've been able to do this with full general anesthesia. There are options to do it with a hybrid, which is called conscious sedation, in which some type of sedation is given with local, and liposuction can be done with just local only. So it can be done with all forms of anesthesia, from a fully awake situation to an awa a situation where you're completely asleep and don't remember a thing from the procedure. All of this, however, is decided upon by both the patient and by the areas and the amount of liposuction that's necessary. So if you're someone that wants a huge area done, clearly doing it with just local only is not gonna work for you. But if you're a patient who wants a very small targeted area treated, certainly you can have this done being fully awake in an office type setting. What are various types of liposuction? Well, you know, there's tons of different techniques that are reported out there. If somebody does an internet search, they're gonna find lots of ads that pop up. Then they're gonna find lots of different techniques. This doctor does this technique. This doctor does this technique. Everyone has their opinion about what technique is the best for liposuction. Having had experience with various types of liposuction uh, techniques, I really think it, a lot of it really has to do with the actual surgeon who's doing the procedure. The most important thing is the surgeon. Having a surgeon who has a good understanding of what liposuction is, how the technique is done, how to do it safely, and how to get the best cosmetic results. That's really what your goal as a patient should be, to find that type of a surgeon. But in terms of the, the various types of liposuction that are out there, suction assisted, using ultrasound to help break up the fat, using power-assisted techniques that can decrease surgeon fatigue and potentially the duration of the procedure. There are other you know, techniques that have been marketed that include laser, techniques that have been marketed including RFA that potentially tighten the skin. There's a wide variety of techniques out there. But again, the most important thing to note is the surgeon doing it, the situation or the safety in which it's being done, and those are the top two things um, to get you the best results in the best way. What happens to fat after liposuction? Well, it's certainly removed. Um, it's uh, definitely removed. And uh, you know, will that fat come back? Well, clearly, if someone continues to gain weight or the metabolism slows down, fat comes back. Where will it come? It'll come to other parts of the body in, in a proportionate way the areas that were treated with liposuction have removal of those adipocytes. So those adipocytes aren't going to repopulate and re-expand from our knowledge. However, other parts of, their, of your body will likely increase um, after liposuction if you gain further weight. What do I um, need to do in the post-op period? The post-operative period is just as important as the operation itself. So, there are sutures that are placed on small incisions, and these are typically removed shortly after the surgery and no longer than a week. Some surgeons don't even use sutures, and they just use different types of ways to close the incision since they're very, very small, and they're often less than um, half a centimeter. There are dressings which are placed. These absorb any excess fluid that drains at the immediate time of the surgery. And a very important thing are garments. So these are garments that are pre-ordered for the patient and patients wear these garments for a period of time after the surgery. So um, 
how long patients wear garments for, do they wear them both day and nighttime. This is really dependent between um, a conversation with you and your surgeon and the areas that are being treated. But the purpose of the garment is to decrease swelling and help you get to the body that you, the liposuction is gonna help achieve for you. So it's basically helping mobilize fluid, compressing the soft tissues, and getting you down to the size that you've desired before your procedure. Other issues in the post-operative period is pain. So pain control is important and everyone has a different pain experience after surgery. This is something that is very person dependent. However, there are uh, pain medications that are administered and there is some pain that happens in the post-operative period. And an important way to, um, to understand this is that if you're having a larger procedure, so if you're having a big um, area of your body treated with a larger volume of liposuction, you're probably gonna be in more pain and discomfort than if you had a smaller area that was treated. But again, pain is a very personal, um, is a very personal thing and each person has a different pain response. Expectations, certainly there is bruising, certainly there is discomfort, certainly there is soreness. Um, the worst is clearly the first week and then it gets better after that. Um, at two weeks, things are already better. The swelling may take a period of time, it can last three to four months for acute swelling to subside. Certain parts of the body do a lot better with swelling. Lower extremities don't do as well as the upper extremities. And um, it can take an entire year for the scars and everything to fully settle. But you will see results quite soon after the procedure. What are the risks of liposuction? This is a really important thing to ask and an important thing to review in detail with your surgeon before any um, any consideration of this operation, but something that we've discussed a bit is contour deformity, worsening of cellulite and rippling, and irregularities of the soft tissue. And some factors that contribute to these issues or outcomes after liposuction is number one, patient selection, the quality of the skin. If you are doing liposuction in a part of your body where the skin is just loose or saggy, doesn't have good recoil, that part of the body is probably not gonna do as well as opposed to another part of your body in which the skin was already pretty tight and had a good propensity to recoil and achieve a good shape after the procedure. So cellulite can certainly be worsened, rippling can be worsened, there may be soft tissue irregularities, and this can happen a lot, especially in thinner patients that you know want really fine tuning of certain areas. And if liposuction is done it, either very aggressively or on someone with um, you know, an inadequate skin consistency, these types of problems can be accentuated. Um, I wanted to comment on um, there are different planes of tissue uh, which are, um, are addressed with liposuction. So there's a deeper fat that's treated and if liposuction is done very aggressively or done in an area that's too superficial or closer to the top of the skin, more problems are gonna come in terms of these contour deformities. There are medical risks. There's something called a DVT or a blood clot in the leg and this can go to the lungs and cause something called a pulmonary embolism and also um, a fat embolism can occur. And these often happen with large, much larger um, uh, areas of liposuction. But these are some complications that may occur but are not common. Um, there may be anesthesia complications. There may be toxicity to some of the medications that are used. And there are other complications as well. Some of the very standard complications of surgery such as infection, bleeding, wound problems, and uh, changes in pigment of the skin, scar. But some of the top things to consider are the contour irregularities, um, rippling, worsening of cellulite. Uh, these are things that really um, you know, are in the hands of the surgeon um, and patient selection is very, very important. Um, but these are complications that need to be um, you know, um, uh, considered before uh, having this type of procedure. So we, tend, uh, we uh, aim to provide a comprehensive and patient um, you know, tailored approach to liposuction, achieving that aesthetic that um, the patient desires. And uh, you know, our goal is to provide the safest care in the best way possible for the patient. So um, patient safety is, a, is my priority and getting you the cosmetic results is also uh, my desire. And patient selection um, and a safe uh, environment uh, with pain control and uh, 
um, th those are the top things I advocate for my patients. Um, so if you are interested in this procedure, you can call the office and set up an appointment for a consultation and uh, get the ball rolling, uh, you know, um, have liposuction for your active lifestyle and uh, get those areas of uh, disproportionate fat treated. So um, I think at this time we can uh, go to our viewership and see if there are any questions that are out there. Uh, thank you so much for this. So um, we have a couple questions from our, uh, our uh, viewer base. So number one, uh, how much does the procedure cost? Um, that's an excellent question. The um, procedure has a range of costs and the best way to get that information is from a consultation and setting up a, you know, setting up a appointment and getting that information based on the areas that you're interested in and uh, you know um, whether you are a patient that's going to require local anesthesia or general anesthesia those are all considerations in terms of uh, how much the procedure will cost another question we have is i have a lot of medical problems am i still a good candidate for liposuction well that's an excellent question um, certainly liposuction uh, can be done in patients that have medical problems medical problems have to be evaluated and considered in the global context of the procedure in order to minimize our risk and uh, um, you know, improve safety. Certainly certain patients would be at higher risk for infection. This would be patients with diabetes or patients that um, are on any type of immunosuppression. Um, certainly smoking is not advocated and uh, it would be best to quit smoking before any uh, of this type of a pro uh, procedure being done. But um, you can have medical problems and still be a candidate for liposuction. Another question, uh, I've never had surgery before. I'm scared of surgery. What happens if I have a complication? Surgery is definitely a scary thing, especially for someone who's never had surgery and for patients that have had surgery before. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a procedure that they're, um, you know, they're undergoing. And the most important things to, um, you know, to kind of answer this question to consider are um, having your surgery or procedure being done in a reputable place, a place where a board-certified surgeon, a board-certified plastic surgeon is doing your procedure, that you're having excellent care in terms of the facilities, the accreditation, the anesthesia that's being provided. So those are the things that also go into a patient's um, you know, uh, desire for this procedure, investigating those types of um, those types of issues before having any surgery. And these are things that can be done to help someone who may be scared of having surgery. And what happens if I have a complication? Well, that's a great question. Complications do unfortunately happen. However, if you have gone to a place where you have a reputable surgeon taking care of you um, and you are at a, at a facility that provides um, certified care, you know, the complications can all be addressed in the best way possible for you. Um, another question, do you, uh, uh, do you have uh, photos of before and after a successful procedure? Yes, we have these photos. They're available in the office and you can see that at the time of your consultation. Um, another question, does insurance cover liposuction? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question and it's a pretty common question. For the most part, insurance does not cover liposuction. It is considered cosmetic for the majority of cases. However, there are some situations where there may be a specific, you know, really fatty tumor or other scenario where liposuction can be used. So that's something to ask the surgeon uh, for your particular case. Here's another question. Is liposuction the same as liposculpture? Um, well, lipos liposuction involves uh, quote, sculpting. Uh, it's never done blindly and it's always, it always should be done with an aesthetic eye and uh, the desire to provide the patient with you know, the most beautiful outcome after the procedure. So in essence, liposuction has sculpture involved in that sense. Um, so it is, I, I, it is essentially a similar uh, uh, procedure, although uh, many talk about having liposculpture Well, I want to thank uh, the viewership out there for your time and joining us today on our uh, Facebook Live. And uh, again, my name is Dr. Andrew Vardanian from uh, UCLA Plastic Surgery, and we'd be happy to see you in the office. Have a great day.